This is a contact uh, to the point, Kunhe Go, our show, where we're looking at uh, where Rwanda is coming from, and where we are today, and where we're heading. As Rwanda decides, today we chose to speak about investment, and uh, to have uh, that in details, we are hosting Claire Akamanzi, the CEO of uh, Rwanda Development Board. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Uh, Let's start as Rwanda decides you give us a global picture of the investment climate in Rwanda. Well, I believe when we say Rwanda decides, we're thinking uh, about uh, particularly the, the, the FPR mandate uh, that was given to President Kagame since 2010. Mm -hmm. And if you, to, if you look at where we've come from uh, since 2010, and as of today in 2017, from an investment angle, and of course there are many angles you can look at, but let's look at it from an investment angle. Uh, we've in RDB, uh, registered over 1,000 projects, new projects that the economy had since, since 2010. Mm -hmm. And all those 1,000 pro projects actually account for about $7 billion uh, in terms of what new investments the country has had. So more than $7 billion, which is almost the size of our GDP, which is uh, uh, $8.3 8 billion, has come in, in, in terms of total investment since 2010. And that shows growth. And I think that uh, also looking at an at institutional level, uh, RDB as an organization that has been the lead uh, institution promoting investments since 2010, and also having been created in 2009, so we're almost as old as uh, uh, the last the, the, the mandate that's ending. And I think also looking at RDB as an institution is an interesting way of looking at that growth, not just in terms of numbers, but also in terms of an institution. Now, something else th also that we like to look at is uh, the size of investments that we, we register as a country. Mm. Numbers is 1,000 since uh, 2010, but also if you look at the size of investments, it shows growth. Mm -hmm. An average project that RDB registered in 2010 was about $7 million. Today, an average project that we register is almost uh, above $10 million, which means even the size or the type of investments that we are attracting is growing, which mm. also is another indicator of growth uh, that's happening in the country. So yes, uh, in terms of a global picture, both in terms of numbers, in terms of average size, but also an interesting angle to look at is uh, the investment climate, because these numbers come because investors are attracted by the investment climate. Rwanda today is the second easiest place to do business in Africa. Rwanda today is um, uh, the seventh most efficient government, not in East Africa, not in Africa, but in the world. Mm -hmm. And, and so when you see investments growing, they're responding to an investment climate that is truly attractive, and Rwanda has been a leader in that sense as well. Which sectors are these uh, projects, these investments, uh, w what is the big share? Is it in construction, in agriculture? Where exactly are these uh, new uh, projects? The biggest investments that uh, we've attracted since 2010 have been in several sectors. But let me tell you about the interesting sectors uh, that, uh, that we've seen in the past few years. Let me start with tourism. In 2010, we didn't have Marriott, mm. we didn't have Convention Center, we did not have uh, Radisson, we didn't have Park Inn, and we didn't have many other smaller hotels that the country has. We didn't have Wilderness Safari in Kinigi. Today, if you drive between Musans and Kinigi, you just can't stop seeing numbers of hotels that have just grown on the left and right side of the mm. road mm. from Musanze to Kinigi. So many hotels. I, th I think it's over 20 hotels that we've seen in Musanze today. All those were not existent uh, by far in, in 2010. And so tourism has been one key sector that we've seen uh, a lot of investments grow in, including now in our airline. Rwanda has also grown very, very exponentially over the last seven years to becoming one of the fastest growing airlines on the African continent. And again, that's something that we've seen uh, in, the, in the last mandate. Uh, the second sector that I want to talk about is energy. Uh, in 2010, if you asked me uh, what is the biggest issue that you want to resolve to make, to make Rwanda even more attractive for investment, I would tell you energy. But if you look at the investments that have gone in energy over the last seven years, that has translated in uh, actually us more than doubling the amount of power that we produce and consume um, in the country. And it's also today bringing the question of how can we attract more uh, electricity intensive industries because we're seeing that in the next few years we'll have a lot of electricity available uh, on the grid. Now what kind of investments have we seen there? Very interesting investments. Uh, we've, we, we actually solved the question of can you really generate power for methane gas because there was a technology issue, there was a safety issue, an environmental issue. And today all those issues were, were resolved in many ways and mitigated in some ways 
that we see on the grid we have power. We have Kivuat, an American investment company that invested in, um, in, in methane gas. We have Symbion Power that is currently investing in uh, methane gas. Uh, but apart from methane gas, we saw a lot more hydro projects. We have so many um, uh, dozens of uh, small hydro projects that are you know, below five megawatts. Of course, we had Nyamarongo, uh, almost 28 megawatts, also come up um, mm. again. It was commissioned in a few years ago. But it's not just methane gas and, and hydro. We also saw an interesting um, new addition in the energy sector, which is uh, solar. Mm -hmm. We had um, <coughs> a company that you know, Norma Ghana, that is currently producing uh, power. It's called Gigawatt about 8.5 megawatts on the national grid. And then we have lots of off-grid off -grid solutions. We have Mobisol, we have Ignite, we have Box. We have so many mm. uh, companies that are actually producing off-grid solutions, which was not the case uh, seven years ago. So energy clearly has been a winner. But there are also other sectors. One of uh, the highlights that we like to share within uh, RDB is when you walk into CNH in the Special Economic Zone mm. and you look around CNH and you see 600 Rwandans busy sewing textiles and garments. Mm. A few years ago, the special economic zone was just a project. In 2010, it was just a project with a few um, uh, uh, projects being looked at. Today, you walk there and then you see just one company very busy making uniforms that are exported to different parts of the world, including the US and Germany. You have them producing for the local market. And you look around and you see over 600 Rwandans getting jobs. Now, that is real. And mm. that's what we talk about when we say growth. It's not just the numbers. It's those people that you see getting jobs in, um, in the special economic zone. Construction and real estate. Anyone who was in Rwanda in 2010 and is in Rwanda today, the face of Kigali, in, it, as an example, has changed tremendously. And I'm sure many Rwandans who are watching uh, this program have been participating in the campaign rallies all over the country. If you see what's happening out of the country as well, you look at the face of Musanze, if you look at the face in Muhanga, if you look at all these different cities that uh, have also come up in the past few years, construction and real estate has been one of the biggest um, investment um, sectors, including by Rwandans themselves. Mm. I mean, look at Peace Plaza, a Rwandan investment, um, Kigali City Tower, all these that are changing the face of, um, of the city, or Kigali Heights. Mm. Very few years was just an old post office building. Today you go there and you have a coffee shop, you have an ice cream shop, you have a kids' children's center, you have a place to shop clothes. This is real, and mm. this has really changed uh, living or the welfare of people in Rwanda. They actually are living a truly cosmopolitan uh, life because these services are available um, in the city. Where are we now? You, keep, you have these uh, regular uh, reforms of uh, ease of doing business. Mm -hmm. Where are we today? What have we improved? Mm -hmm. Well, <coughs> when, we, when we look at our business reforms, we're looking at uh, doing three things, mostly. Number one, we're looking at uh, the number of procedures that an investor has to undergo to get any service. So how many steps? How many steps do you have to, to go to? The second thing we're looking at is um, the number of procedures that are actually required for you to do that. And the last thing is the cost of, um, of getting that service. So our reforms have been about addressing all of that. And uh, whether it's starting a business, or applying for a mortgage in a bank, or applying for intellectual property certificate, or um, construction, construction permit, permit uh, getting even other services, you know, that Rwanda Online Irembo services gives, like applying for a death permit, applying for a birth certificate, applying for all these services that are given, visas, passports. If you look at uh, the services, it's been reducing the number of procedures, the time that it takes, and the cost. Uh, of doing so. And so that's what we've been doing. And you can see every indicator. Starting a business takes six hours um, in the country. It's automated. Mm. You know, you don't have to walk to RDB. You can sit, if you are in Virunga Mountains and you have internet, you can actually apply for a, for a, mm. um, a company there and you'll have it registered. If you are sitting in Silicon Valley or in New York, you can sit there and apply uh, for your company and register it without having to travel all the way to Rwanda. That has made it easy. It has, it's, it's also free because it's done online, so the cost has been abolished. And the number of steps that it takes uh, is uh, very straightforward steps. Mm -hmm. That same process has been replicated in how long it takes to register um, uh, land or to transfer land. If you own property and you, want, you sell it to me and I have to change it from your name to my name, the same process has been cut down in terms of the number of days it takes, 
the cost and also the, the number of procedures that you have to undergo to make that happen. And, and so it's about basically the processes. But apart from that, it's also um, introducing um, institutions that support that. RDB is an example, as I said in the beginning, of uh, a reform to actually have an institution that delivers uh, a reformed uh, business environment. But apart from that, we have uh, the commercial courts that have, ha have also done a tremendous job. If you look at uh, enforcing contracts, it takes uh, less than 100 days you know, from the time you uh, register a, a, d a commercial dispute up to the time you get a decision. And again, it's one of the areas that we've done well um, as a country. If you look at getting credit, our Credit Reference Bureau, again, the time that it takes, the procedures, it's been very straightforward and we are the fourth uh, best place in terms of accessing credit uh, and the processes of doing that um, in the world. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's where we are. Uh, of course, we still want to improve every year and uh, the challenge that, that we've given ourselves is how can we become the top 30 in the world? Today Rwanda ranks 56th in the world uh, and second in Africa. And the challenge we've given ourselves is how do we get to 30, top 30 and in the next few years we're going to be working hard to see how uh, we keep improving and, and, and also you know, daring mm. <laughs> to be among the best in the world. This is contact and uh, as Rwanda decides we're looking at climate of investment in Rwanda. Uh, uh, beginning July, you introduced in terms of facilitating this uh, uh, group of investors. You you started uh, an investor open day and to get feedback from uh, the same people who are investing. What are you getting in terms of that feedback? Mm -hmm. Today, uh, I was actually you know uh, coming from one meeting to another, and I quickly checked uh, on my phone and I, I caught up with uh, Twitter. And I found that one of the notifications that I received in my, on my uh, timeline was uh, a tweet from Brioche. Mm. Um, turns out Brioche had just left RDB, uh, where they had attended the Investor Open Day. And then they gave us feedback on Twitter. I, I didn't participate in the Investor Open Day, but my colleagues in RDB did, mm. uh, from the aftercare department. And uh, Brioche was saying, you know, thank you very much. This Open Day was very helpful. They were able to go and give us feedback on something that they want us to improve, mm. an issue that they have. And so um, when I see that kind of feedback from Brioche, uh, and then it reassures us at RDB that um, uh, the, the, the idea that we actually you know, replicated from, um, from the local government mm. is helpful. Mm. Uh, the local government, Uturelet Kose, all the districts in the country have what they call Umunsi Woguche Marewas of Jawaturaj, which is an invest a, a day to resolve issues of Aturaj. Mm. And we learned, we actually emulated them. We learned something from them, which is... Um, uh, you know, to set aside a time or a day mm. when uh, you just stop and listen to investors and the issues that they have. And we know that it's normal for investors to have issues because when implementing a project, you know, there are issues that you, you know, you may find um, a tax assessment different from how you thought it should be. You might uh, find that you have a land problem. For example, one of the investors that came to our last open day, and I'm sure she wouldn't mind if I gave this example, is a university, the tourism university, RTUC that had had uh, problems of uh, other people claiming their land in, in, uh, in Kichuchiro. Mm. And so we were <coughs> able to bring Kigali City on board and Kichuchiro and we solved the issue and she actually got her land title with her, her, mm. her, her, her line. And so um, it's um, being able to, you know, to, to resolve issues that is important. It's, it's in, an, in, a, in an impossible world to say that uh, investors will never have issues. It's very normal that um, during implementation there might be an issue or question. So do not expect that there will be a case where there will be no issue that investor faces. That will mm. be in a world that doesn't exist. However, what is important is when investors face issues, where do they go? Uh, who receives them? Can they quickly resolve that issue? And so RDB decided to establish the Investor Open Day as that platform where investors who have an issue can come and the issues will be resolved, recorded. We have a database where we record them, we follow them through, and when we resolve the issue, we notify them. And we keep track of uh, how many issues have been resolved and to see how successful we are you know, increasing, increasingly becoming. And so I think it's been very useful from the feedback that we get from people like Brioche and the RTUC, the Rwanda University of Tourism. I think uh, it's something that we want to continue improving and we want to make available for investors uh, to come and solve their issue quickly. Because an issue that is not resolved uh, obviously delays the, the implementation of that project and we want that project to become implemented as fast as possible so 
this is why we are we're doing this there are a number of incentives you give uh, to investors depending on the on the size or the, the level of their their, their investments mm -hmm. take us through these uh, kind of incentives to mm -hmm. investors mm -hmm. first of all i think the first incentive that rwanda gives investors is a predictable stable efficient government and environment i think that the first um that's the first incentive we give. If you come to Rwanda, you know that the governance works. You know that the country is increasingly improving itself. You know that the country is increasingly uh, finding uh, ways to make the environment more attractive. And most importantly, you have a leader, the president, His Excellency Paul Kagame, whose focus has really been how do we make the private sector contribute a lot more to driving the economy. And so I think that's the first incentive. Because once you have that, you know, your business is secure. Your business um, is stable and you can actually see that the future is about growth. Because as a business person, you want to grow your turnover every year. And so you want to see that the environment is going to support your dreams of doubling, tripling or growing your investment in the, in the long term. So I think I must say the first incentive that investors have is that, that mm. they get in the country. The second um, incentive that we also give in the country is um, tax of fiscal related incentives mm. and those that, uh, that that have been given the new investment code that was uh, promulgated in 2015 are for example one of the most attractive that we have is um, for exports because we want to change the structure of our exports we want to see new export areas we're giving uh, a reduction by half of um, corporate income tax which is otherwise 30 percent but if you export in non-traditional areas so non-traditional, not, not coffee, not tea, not um, the usual uh, raw material, mi minerals. Mm. But if you add value and you process and you, you export new areas, including services uh, as well as goods, you pay 15% of corporate income tax instead of 30%, which is a half reduction. And that mm. has been very attractive. Attractive for the investors doing that, but also for government, it's a policy um, instrument because we're trying to shift the structure of our economy to these new areas we're promoting. Uh, another incentive that we give is um, for big investments. If you invest $50 million and more, uh, and uh, at least 30% of that is uh, equity, mm. uh, so you're bringing new money into the economy, uh, we also give you a tax incentive of a seven-year tax holiday. And again, we put priority sectors like affordable housing, uh, health, energy, infrastructure. Again, because we want to stimulate more investments in those areas that need more, more support. Uh, we also have other incentives like um, accelerated depreciation by 50%. Uh, you're allowed to, for tax purposes, uh, depreciate your, your, your assets by about 50%, which is also a faster way of depreciating them for tax purposes. Um, we also have um, uh, capital gains tax that is not required for investors who are registered with RGB. And VAT uh, claims that we also uh, you know, work with RRA to make sure you get them at a re really fast rate. So tax incentives is another incentive. Um, but also, most importantly, I must say that uh, the way the ecosystem works to support an investor is probably also another incentive that should be looked at. Uh, for example, increasing investments in education. We have a lot more universities coming in Rwanda. We have Carnegie Mellon University for Computer Engineering. We have Africa Leadership University that is also going to focus on STEM sciences, but also um, entrepreneurship and mm. businesses. <coughs> we have AIMS, the Africa Institute of Mathematical Sciences. We have um, Mount Kenya, Oklahoma. Mm. These are producing skills that investors need. The single most important you know, input in their business is how people are able to deliver on what they need to deliver. We're investing as a country very much in availing those skills for investors. Um, health increasingly you know improving our um, medical insurance schemes improving our um, you know centers for um, for health services improving do you know doctors numbers of doctors that are coming on the market again that's also very attractive to investors because then an environment that looks after its people and makes them healthy means that they can actually deliver uh, and become more productive yeah. which is <coughs> a very interesting factor that I must say um, I talked about CNH earlier. Mm. CNH is, uh, is manufacturing textile. Obviously, when we were discussing with them to come to Rwanda, there was one issue they had, which is our distance to the coast, because they rely on importing 
some of their raw materials and mm. then exporting the finished product. And so the, the, the cost of uh, transporting between Rwanda and Mombasa or Dar es Salaam was something that they were concerned about. But very quickly they found that it's still worth it to do business in Rwanda even if we're not in the cost because the productivity of an individual Rwandan was a lot more than the other countries that worked in, in Africa. Mm. Because um, our people that are trained are able to deliver uh, within the, 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 the output that they've been trained to do mm. and do a good job and faster. And so they, the feedback we got from CNH is, okay, actually the fact that you are very productive as skills mm. compensates all the other issues like not being next to the sea, which Again, we invest in our people, and our people are important. And those, that also is an incentive for mm. investing. In, in you recently hosted uh, uh, Jack Ma, uh, Tony Ilumeru, and other investors. Mm. What, is, what is coming from them? What are they bringing on board? Mm. I think, first of all, the fact that they come to Rwanda um, is, uh, is, a, is, is testament of um, what they believe in our country. There are many countries that they could have gone to, uh, but then they chose to come to Rwanda. And I think... That alone is because they're in a way endorsing the Rwanda story that they know as a, an emblem of the story of Africa rising and a true uh, definition of um, a country that you know exemplifies what the future, f not just for, for Africa but for developing countries is. And so them coming to Rwanda in the first place I think is a very good message in that they're believing in um, and endorsing the story that Rwanda has which is a growth story and a stable story. Uh, but when we talk to them, uh, they tell us that, uh, first of all, a lot of times, most of the guests like those that are very high caliber. Mm. When they come to us, the feedback they give us is, number one, we, they found that the country exceeded their expectations. Uh, they found that the country was more, uh, yes, they had all the good stories about the country, but they actually found the country more orderly, more organized, clean, efficient, friendly, welcoming, and those who end up doing business, they, they, they just see the efficiency right from the airport. When they arrive, how immigration receives them, very business-like, very transactional-like, you know, mm. and very quick. And that's the feedback they give us. And it's very important because that impression is what they expect when they come to the country and what they will find when they come to the country. But it's the first impression that, that is important. And so um, we hope that this drives them to do more. Uh, when he was leaving, Jack Ma did announce uh, a number of things, initiatives he wants to do with Africa. And I think what's important is that he announced them in Rwanda, uh, which is, which is um, a message that um, he sees Rwanda as part of that, the initiatives that he wants to do in Africa. And he finds that Rwanda is a place that he should um, convey that message mm. to, to Africa. And I think that was um, a good message. But our work at RDB is to continuously work with uh, these personalities, the interests, and convert them into... Um, um, you know, projects that can actually be able to improve the well-being of our people mm. and the performance of our economy. As Rwanda decides now looking in the next seven years, where, where, where do you see the investment? Where do you see investment coming to Rwanda? What is happening in the next uh, seven years? Mm -hmm. So in the last seven years, we've seen growth in investments in different <coughs> sectors. You earlier on told, t t taking us through which sectors are uh, uh, attracting more investors, you spoke about uh, energy and the electricity, but also we, 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 we heard about the car manufacturing or car assembling, the Volkswagen coming mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, how far is it? Mm -hmm. Volkswagen <coughs> expects that they will uh, start their business in Rwanda before the end of 2017. In fact, right now they're working on the logistics, like space and finding you know, partners locally, and they're working on those uh, practical steps to actually establish their business here. Mm. I think it's very interesting because they're looking at two-step uh, businesses. One is to introduce uh, mobility solutions uh, to the country, such as, you know, we all know about Uber, uh, how you can actually share a taxi mm. using uh, softwares or applications that actually enable you to do that. So bring they're going to bring their own version of an IT solution that allows mobility and, and car sharing uh, schemes in the country. But the second part is that they also expect to get, get into assembling of cars um, in Rwanda. And I think uh, the fact that a very well-known, you know, um, world-leading car manufacturer such as Volkswagen picks Rwanda as a place to, to invest is, is for us at RGB uh, a very important message to other investors because they don't just pick any country, they do their homework. 
and they pick a country that they believe uh, helps their growth story. And I think we see them picking Rwanda as a testament to that. So um, we hope that we can announce before end of the year, or they can announce that uh, they've opened their, their shop in Rwanda. Mm. Uh, all these are big investors, but uh, what do you do to facilitate also the small and medium enterprises? Mm -hmm. um, so we have schemes that support investments of all sizes, including the SMEs. And uh, we have a specific SME department in RDB where we have uh, capacity building programs like training SMEs to be able to develop business plans that are bankable. We work with the Business Development Fund where we link uh, the, the companies that we work with to develop their capacity to the Business Development Fund that is a guarantee uh, scheme with other banks. So they actually guarantee loans with other banks that they work with in the country. And they're also now developing to go into equity uh, in some of these businesses. So that's again to help SMEs. Mm. On the tax <coughs> front, IRA has um, a tax rate for SMEs that is uh, absolute numbers depending on the on the turnover that you have. It's not the usual corporate income tax of that 30 percent. So it's threshold depending on how much turnover you make. Again, that's to make it easy uh, for SMEs to file taxes and again not to file as frequently as the big companies do. So yes, we do support SMEs. But I must also say that there's no wall between SMEs and big investors. In mm. fact, the more big investors we get, the more they support the growth of um, SMEs. Of SMEs. I'll give you an example. The fact that we have Marriott and we have Radisson and Serena and other, inv uh, other hotels pack in in the country means that they're going to demand services of SMEs. They're going to want cleaning companies to work with. They're going to want garbage companies to work with. They're going to want suppliers of tomatoes, mm. of uh, French beans. They're going to need uh, traders who import in bulk and sell. And so the fact that these companies are growing, the hotels are growing the country, indirectly also grows the SMEs who mm. are the ones who are going to supply with them. So the two of them actually go together. Sure. And so we, we, we don't always see them as, as very different. But also to support that, RDB has started a program called the Market Linkages Program, which is uh, deliberately working with the uh, big companies to see how they can source more from the country. And so we're going to be going very specific on what do you buy as Radisson, what do you import, what do you get from the country, how can we increase the supplies of more products within the country, w do they need more um, uh, certifications of standards, how can we help them get the certification, do they need um, uh, any other support, maybe transportation, bringing down the cost of transportation, and we work with specifically SMEs so that they can address those issues and be able to supply the big companies more. So that's going to be uh, a very key part of our, of our programs uh, going forward. So that we don't see spinach in our supermarkets imported from... We need to reduce that. <laughs> All right. We really need to reduce mm. that. Yeah. Now, give us a picture of where do you see the investment climate and uh, what kind of investment we'll have in the next seven years. Uh, in the next seven years, um, and this is consistent with our planning, um, I think that we've had, uh, you know, uh, we started the planning of 2050, Vision 2050, with 2030 as a mid-term planning. Uh, RDB has been part of that uh, in the private sector development program. So we see that, um, um, we see four important things that are going to happen to support investment growth in the country. The first goal that we have is uh, to have a very big structure shift of our economy, especially of our exports. Now, from where we are coming from, and uh, uh, you've told us what happened and the development that happened in the last seven years, Gab make us a linkage between uh, the past, where we are now, and where we're heading to. I think, first of all, uh, what the outlook for the next uh, seven years, or, or and even more, is that uh, when investors come to us, they want to be sure that all the good things that they've done, that they've seen in the country, that th has attracted them, the business environment, is going to be sustained in the future. Mm. And I think that's why uh, these elections that are happening right uh, now are very important, because this is when we're going to decide on sustaining and even doing more of what we've been doing over the last um, years. And that's what investors want. They want uh, predictability, stability, and they want that to be sustained. And I think that... Um, uh, the elections, particularly of uh, President Paul Kagame, who's um, the, the RPF candidate, is very important for investors. They want to see that um, sustained in the next few years. And so um, with that, what we also look at as RDB specifically in terms of how we're contributing to that uh, big picture and that, that uh, big mandate um, possibly coming in the next uh, 
uh, years is number one, we want to see a big structural shift of our economy. Mm. We want to see uh, the export structure changing from the usual uh, coffee, tea, tourism. We want to see more manufacturing happening. And already with Made in Rwanda campaign, with uh, the textiles companies that have come out in the country, lots of people making uh, textiles today, we see garments and textiles taking a big share of our exports in the, in the next few years. We are looking at uh, other export structural changes where we have construction materials, uh, food processing, all these uh, being and playing a bigger part of our export structure. Mm. So a structure shift of uh, our economy is one goal that we're seeing happening in the next seven years. The second one is um, uh, increasingly positioning Rwanda as a, a country of proof of concept. Already we've seen that happening. Uh, the example that I'd like to give is Zipline. Zipline is a company of uh, an American uh, entrepreneur from Silicon Valley who had developed a concept of uh, commercial drones and then uh, he had not been able to test it uh, somewhere until he met uh, President Kagame who invited him to do that in Rwanda and he tested it. We worked with him. We have made it easy for him to be able to test the commercial drones idea. He did it and it's, it's working well and now he's being invited in other African countries to do the same. So uh, we want to position Rwanda increasingly as a proof of concept. If you have a concept in the world, uh, anywhere, we want you to know that um, uh, whether you're Rwandan or you're coming from outside Rwanda, you can test your concept here and we'll give you the environment, the support that you need mm. to see if that <coughs> idea works. And if it works, you can scale it to the rest of Africa. Now, it's not only innovative ideas, new ideas. It could be something that you're already doing outside Africa. You're probably doing, doing, doing it in another continent, but you don't know how to go about coming to Africa because you've never done business in Africa. Mm. Come to Rwanda. Try your concept that you've tried elsewhere in Rwanda. If it works, expand it to the rest of Africa. So that's the second uh, big component that we see positioning Rwanda increasingly as a proof of concept country. The third one is that we want to see the emergence of uh, Rwandan economic champions. We have many companies that have, that have grown over the years, local companies, but we want to see uh, more growth of, in of specific companies that are actually transforming the economy and we're, we're calling them Rwandan economic champions that are actually not only stimulating um, growth in the country but they are, they've become champions that they can actually go and export their investments to other countries as well. So we want to grow those kinds of companies as well. The fourth uh, big item is um, you know we want to make Rwanda the most competitive country um, on the African continent. Today we are ranked third and we want to look at what else we need to do to actually become the most competent. And that's going to be our goal, the most competitive. And that's going to be our goal for the next seven years. And so... Uh, uh, Are we in the top 30 of the world soon? That is our target. Mm. That is our target. But in Africa, we're the third and want to become the best on this continent, which means also being among the top um, in the world. Mm. So those are the four <coughs> big goals that we have. If I mm. could just go through them again, structure shift of the economy, proof of concept country for the world, run an economic champions growing, and then uh, a more competitive um, country in Africa. This is as Rwanda decides, the CEO of Rwanda Development Board, Claire Kamanzi, thank you so much. Welcome. Mm -hmm. It was a pleasure.